I've just gotten done with watching Bleach's Super Stage EX panel, which was live streamed on the official Jump channel at 7 pm Japan time. Now, Jump Festa had started way back in 1999, and this year marks the 24th year anniversary. And as with every Jump Festa, there was a lot of expectation going into the event, and I had even made a video a couple of days ago talking about our realistic and unrealistic expectations for the event. Now, there is a tendency to get really excited about Jump Festa, and year after year, nothing really big has ever revealed at the event. However, last year we did get our first proper trailer for the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime at Jump Festa 22. Now also, this Bleach panel is the first one in the history of the event, which has been live streamed internationally with English subtitles. And additionally, Kubo was in attendance during the event, and the last time that he had appeared during a live stream was back in March of 2020, when the Bleach Thousand Year Blood War arc anime was first announced. So before the event, there was understandably an expectation that things would be very different this time around, and we would be getting more announcements and big reveals during the event. So let's actually talk about what they did during this 40 minute span of the Bleach Super Stage EX panel. So as with Jump Festa, you always get these huge billboards outside of the event promoting all of the series that will be showcased. And year after year, Bleach wasn't actually on this huge billboard, but finally we've got a big picture of Ichigo on there, right alongside all of these other huge jump properties like One Piece, Jujutsu Kaisen, My Hero Academia. And of course, you've got a really big image of Anya and who doesn't love Anya? If you were to have physically attended Jump Festa, Studio Piro had actually set up their own booth at the event. You got them promoting the different production material for the anime, with some trailers playing and some huge promotional posters. They even had somebody dress up in a con mascot suit. They've even got details about the airings of episode 11 and the double episode feature that's going to air on the 26th of December, as well as information about the Blu-ray and DVD. There you go, Bleach is on the right hand side here at Studio Piro's booth and Naruto is on the left here. And in my last Jump Festa predictions video, I did speak about how SH Figure Arts have announced their own Bleach line for the Thousand Year Blood War arc. And we've had this reveal of an incredible figure of Ichigo that they're releasing. SH Figure Arts are known to make some of the best action figures that there are, so this is definitely one to get if you're a Bleach fan. So the event had actually started with a 3 minute AMV that had aired at the end of the first episode of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, and it goes over the events of the 2004 anime. Accompanying this AMV is of course Tatsuya Kitani's incredible song called Rapport that's playing in the background. As the event begins, our host introduces us to the Bleach voice cast and we have in attendance the voice actors for Ichigo. Uryu, Rukia, Renji, and even Byakuya. And last but not least, even Kubo is revealed to be in attendance right next to all of the voice actors. Now, during this early portion of the panel, Kubo does reveal that the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime has been in planning for years at this point. Now, as expected from any Jump Festa panel, there's a lot of talking and Q&As with the voice actors and Kubo. And during this segment, they go over each of the voice actors' favorite scenes from the first call of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. And you see Kubo and the VAs reacting to each of the favorite scenes. Kubo does add some insight to some of the original scenes in the anime, like where Ichigo uses his Bankai during the first episode, where he's fighting just a group of hollows. He says that this decision to include his Bankai here was a suggestion from the anime staff, as they were thinking about the fans here. So like a lot of us had assumed, this was definitely a fan service moment. And I think that it was a really impactful way to reintroduce the protagonist into the story. Now, Kubo's favorite scene from the first call was Yuhobak activating his sanctuary praise, and with Yamamoto reacting by initiating the third stage of his Bankai, Kai Zankonotachi South, and we see these skeletal figures rising from the ground, marching towards the Quincy leader. Kubo says that he had really enjoyed drawing this scene in the manga, and it reveals that he had actually come up with most of Yamamoto's abilities and his Bankai years ago, and he was just trying to figure out what was the best way to include these into the manga for quite a while. And there was no other better opportunity than Yamamoto's battle against Yuhabak, where his Bankai was showcased for the first time. Kubo then goes on to talk about being the original supervisor over the anime production, and they comment on some original scenes, and the first scene that they speak about is the original content involving Sasakibe, as he showcases his Bankai for the first time in front of a younger Yamamoto. We learn that Sasakibe's Bankai was created for Bleach Brave Souls, as Kubo was asked by the Brave Soul staff to draw illustrations of how Sasakibe's Bankai works, and it was from these illustrations that eventually his Bankai was included into the anime. So you can thank Bleach Brave Souls for the Sasakibe flashback that we had, which all of us reacted to very positively when the episode had aired. 
episode. We get to see another anime exclusive scene that Kubo in particular was looking forward to seeing, and it's the expanded look at Unohana's Bankai and a battle against Kimpachi where we get some additional fight sequences. And this of course is from episode 10 of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime. Kubo says that he'd enjoy drawing Kimpachi vs Unohana a lot, as well as Yamamoto vs Yuhabak. And in the manga, there were a lot of points that he'd included within his notes that sometimes were included and sometimes had to be scrapped from the manga. So during the anime adaptation of these scenes, he actually went back to his notes and tried to include things that were not included within the manga here. And in addition to this, he had referred to his notes from the manga to decide which point was the best to end the first core of the anime on. So I'm guessing this may be the reason why episode 12 and 13 are going to be combined into a special. We may be getting a lot of additional content in there. We are then shown a video message from the director of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, Tomohisa Toguchi. He reveals that Kubo had given him permission to aggressively cut any comedic moments so as to not take away any tension or seriousness from the scenes when they're in the anime form. Even Toguchi states that he found it difficult to weave together some of the comedic moments without ruining the tension that's established within the anime. I think the way that stories are told within manga form is easier to include some comedic gags, but when it comes to anime and you've got different elements like voice acting and music, it's really hard to squeeze in jokes randomly like how it is within the manga. So it's great to see that Kubo had given him permission to remove all of these gags. I know a lot of people were complaining about some of the cut content, but it seems like it's all done with Kubo's permission, which is very reassuring. So we then have some question and answers for the voice actors as they reveal how they had prepared for their roles, and it's made evident that some of these voice actors are huge Bleach fans, and in particular Uryu's voice actor had reread the entire manga and even the Thousand Year Blood War arc in preparation for his role. Morita adds to this, and it seems like he really knows the manga well, as he comments on a scene during Kirinji's bathhouse, where he says that a certain line was cut from the anime, and he realises that this panel isn't going to be included. And of course, it's the Rukia Peach scene, and he really had wanted to include this back within the anime by actually saying the line word for word as it was within the manga. But even after saying this comedic line of where Ichigo reacts to seeing Rukia, it wasn't included within the anime. So Morita is definitely a big fan, and he really tried hard for his here. He makes a point to say that a lot of the lines that are cut from the episode script, he tries to include after having read the manga, of course, before his recording session. Sometimes he's successful with getting some of these gag lines into the anime, while other times he isn't. But who knows if in the Blu-ray release, some of these lines that Morita has said may actually be animated in some deleted scenes or extended cuts of episodes. Morita then goes on to ask Kubo about what kind of direction he wants to take with the anime, in terms of adding additional scenes to it, as he says that there may be things that he couldn't express within the manga that he can now do with the anime. But Kubo unfortunately does say that there are some additional scenes that aren't going to be included, like details about Unohana's backstory which is fully fleshed out, explaining how she had grown up, what events led to her joining the original Gote 13, and how she had learnt swordsmanship. Kubo says that if this was included within the anime, then it would put the actual main story off to the side. So this is why Unohana's backstory wasn't included, and probably will not be included in anime form. Morita does push Kubo here and he's speaking for all the fans, as he tells him that a lot of fans would love to know about Unohana's backstory, as he questions if in any way he will be adding this into the anime or in any future work. But Kubo says that he isn't planning on including including this story within the anime as of this moment, but from the way that he is laughing, it kind of gives me hints that he may include this in the manga at some point, especially if he plans on continuing the hell arc. And we know that Unohana was sent to hell, and if a character returns as some sort of a villain, then it would be a great opportunity for her backstory to be told. Now while this may frustrate a lot of fans, Kubo says that his philosophy with his work is that less is more, and that there's a great deal of intrigue in the mysteries that he's laid out within the story. And if he reveals all of his cards, then it takes away from this intrigue. He even quotes the line, if it is hidden, then it is a flower and he really likes this idea. So as the 40 minute panel wraps up, they speak about how the final episode will be one hour long, and we get a poster for this one hour episode. This poster is dubbed The Blade and Me, and it's the episode airing on the 26th of December that's combining episodes 12 and 13. Now we know for a fact this is going to be a full 60 minute episode, it's not going to be just two 20 minute episodes combined, and with ad breaks filling up the time to make it 60 minutes. This is actually one whole hour long, so hopefully there's going to be 20 minutes of additional 
promotional material in this episode. And of course you've got Ichigo here with Ishin on his left hand side and his mother Masaki on the right hand side. And what's incredible to note, on the left hand side of the image you see Ichigo's larger sword which represents his Shinigami and hollow powers which is with Ishin. And on the right hand side of the image you see his shorter blade which represents his Quincy side with his mother Masaki. And it's just a really great detail and it shows that the people who are creating the anime really know their stuff about the series. And it's conveyed visually really well. This is an incredible promotional poster for the final few episodes of the first call of the anime and I'm really looking forward to this one hour special. Additionally the Bleach Art Exhibition and Kubo's Fan Club Club Outside have also been announced to be extended for an additional year in 2023. Then each of the voice actors give their closing comments and from them we get some sort of an idea about Core 2 as even Uryu's voice actor reveals details about Uryu having more added scenes in the second core. And he similar to Morita confirms that Core 2 will return in 2023. As for Kubo's closing comments he says that he was editing scripts of Core 2 until 2 to 3 a.m. just last night. So we know that most nights he is actually going over the scripts for the anime, which indicates that the second core hasn't been animated yet or official production hasn't actually started. And this also must explain why Kubo hasn't done much work on the Hell arc because he is so heavily involved with the production of the anime. Now realistically speaking, if we want consistent quality that matches the first core of the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime, then there is going to have to be a gap of at least 9 months plus until the second core starts to air. Now some have said that they want the gap between cores to be 3 months or less but genuinely anyone who's spreading this kind of speculation has no idea about how anime productions work to be honest. As expected from this jump faster panel we got about 30 to 40 minutes of the voice actor speaking and during their conversations we did get some insights into Kubo's mindset especially details about how he didn't reveal Unohana's backstory purposefully, how he had included certain scenes like Sasakibe's Bankai as well as learning about what his favourite scenes were from the first call. I love how the voice actor of Ichigo Morita was pushing Kubo for more answers like he was speaking for all of his fans and I think he did an excellent job by asking Kubo some really hard hitting questions. And thanks to him we found out that Unahana does actually have a complete backstory and Kubo has done this with a lot of his characters but he chooses very carefully what to include into his story. For all we know every aspect of the story may be fleshed out but in the end it's up to Kubo to decide what he reveals to us and what he keeps a mystery. So from everything that we have learned from this panel we can really assume that Core 2 is in the final stages of planning as it's currently in the pre-production stage so we can expect expect to see the series again I'm guessing in October or November of 2023. But before all of that we've got this Monday to look forward to with episode 11 titled Everything But The Rain and then after that we've got a one hour special and this is pretty much an entire movie in my opinion of episode 12 and 13 that is going to be wrapping up the Everything But The Rain story as well as the first core of the anime. This is an incredibly exciting time to be a Bleach fan. Now while a lot of our predictions and expectations for Jump Festa did not come to fruition we didn't even get a release date for Core 2, it was just mostly details about Core 1. But I did warn all of you not to have your hopes up too high for Jump Festa. But still, we got some great insights from the voice actors and Kubo himself, and overall, it was a pretty fun stream to tune into. Let me know all of your thoughts about the Bleach news revealed at Jump Festa 23. Are you excited for this Monday where the Everything But The Rain story is going to begin? And are you excited for the one hour finale that's going to end the 26th of December? Definitely continue the discussion in the comments. Let me know what all of you thought. There's a lot to be excited about going into 2023 and lastly thank you for making it to the end of this video and I can't wait to see you in my next Bleach video.